This is an example of a U-neck, which is incorrect. This east-west front is not correct. The front shown here is towing in. Here again are well-constructed forequarters as seen from the side and from the front. As stated earlier, the Great Dane in outline should be nearly equal in length and height. The withers slope smoothly into a short, level back with a broad loin. Ribs are well sprung. The underline of the body should be tightly muscled with a well-defined tuck-up. This dog is too long in body. The top line is weak and sagging. A roached back is equally incorrect. This dog is about equal in length of body and height at the withers. The back is short and level with a broad muscular loin. See how the croup is broad and slopes slightly to the high set tail. The tail is not quite level with the back, but rather is a continuation of the spine. It is broad at the base and tapers uniformly down to the hock joint. It may curve slightly if the dog is excited or in motion, but must never be carried above the level of the back. Note that a ring or hook tail is a serious fault and that a dock tail is a disqualification. Hind quarters are strong, broad, muscular, and well angulated in balance with the angulation of the forequarters. The hocks are well let down and the leg beneath the hock joint or metatarsus is perpendicular to the ground. Here the croup is too steep, which is faulty. Seen from the rear, the hocks should be parallel, turning neither in nor out. Note the powerful muscling of the thighs. Like the front feet, rear feet are round and compact with well-arched toes, turning neither in nor out. Nails are short, strong and usually dark. The Dane's coat is short, thick and clean. It should have a glossy appearance, although the coat may become less glossy and heavier in colder weather. The clean, glossy coat is always preferred. The Great Dane's coat color may be one of five types brindle, blue, harlequin, fawn, and black. Let's discuss each one individually. The brindle coat has a yellow gold base color and is brindled with strong black cross stripes in a chevron pattern. A black mask is preferred. Black should also appear on the eye rims and eyebrows and may appear on the ears and on the tip of the tail. The more intense the base color and the more distinct and even the brindling, the better. White markings on the chest, like this, and on the toes are allowable. Black fronted coats or dirty colored brindles are not desirable. Too much or too little brindling are equally undesirable. Fawn Great Danes are yellow gold, like this, with a black mask. Black also appears on eye rims and eyebrows and may also appear on ears and tail tip. But the deep yellow gold is most important and must be given preference. As with brindles, white markings on chest and toes are allowable. Black-fronted, dirty-colored fawns are not desirable. 
The blue coat color is a pure steel blue, as seen here. Again, white markings on chest and toes are allowable. Any deviation from the ideal steel blue, such as mouse gray or silvery tones, is not desirable. Blacks are a glossy black color with the same stipulation about white on chest and toes. Harlequin Great Danes have a pure white base color with black torn patches irregularly and well distributed over the body. A pure white neck, as seen on this dog, is preferred. Black patches so small as to create a stippled or dappled effect are allowable but not desirable. One of the most intriguing and unusual qualities of the Harlequin color pattern is that no two Harlequins have the same markings. All of these dogs are acceptable with a range from light to heavy. You may see Harlequins with a few small gray patches. This is inherent in the genetics of the Harlequin and is acceptable. Single black hairs showing through the white base, which tend to give a salt and pepper or dirty effect, is allowed, although less desirable. To properly evaluate markings, it is important to view dogs from all angles. Any variance in color or markings from the five acceptable colors we've just described and shown shall be faulted to the extent of the deviation. Any Great Dane which does not fall within these five color classifications must be disqualified. Faults of color, with the exception of serious faults, are not to be considered as important as faults of structure and type. The overall quality of the dog is of primary importance. Note that normal graying of mask due to age is not to be penalized. The Great Dane's gait denotes strength and power. The strides should be long and easy with no tossing, rolling or bouncing of the top line. The back line is level and parallel to the ground. In the moving Dane, we should see the same graceful, balanced unit that we observed posed in the ring with his handler. A properly structured dog will carry its outline securely when in motion. Coming toward you, the front legs are carried straight forward, moving cleanly showing no inward or outward movement of elbow or pastern. There is a natural tendency to converge toward a center line of balance as speed increases. And going away, the rear legs travel in a straight line behind the forelegs, with convergence toward the center line as speed increases. The leg remains in a straight line from hip to pad. The hocks should not twist in or out. Strength of hindquarters should be evident. Here the front is elbowing out. The movement shown here lacks effective reach and drive. Here again is correct gait, with long, easy strides and the top line remaining level. The reach in front shows good extension and balances with powerful rear drive. The greatest amount of ground is covered with the minimum number of steps. The action should appear smooth and effortless and give the impression of strength, stamina and endurance. The head is carried slightly forward as in a true working dog. Danes should be shown on a loose lead at a moderate trot.
finally, a word about temperament. The Great Dane must be spirited, courageous, and bold, yet always friendly and dependable. The Dane should never be timid or aggressive toward people, and shows a fondness of children. A passage on the Great Dane in a book printed in Munich in 1887 is as appropriate now as it was then. Power and elegance are united in the most wonderful combination. The proud carriage, the high stature, the fine proportion of limbs, the bright eye, the gloss of coat, the graceful movements, the harmony of the whole body makes their intelligence no less remarkable than their fidelity.